Hey everyone, we are back after a little break, just a little recharge, recharge the brain cells, recharge the energy, uh, focusing on the summer camps that we're doing, but we're back, we're going to kick it off with a week one review, it's a couple of plays from the preseason too, so we can get around to a preseason video, but we're going to roll right into it, with kind of a wonky play, this is a crew of seven, so keep that in mind as we walk through some things here. But this is a crew of seven. They're in scrimmage kick formation. One thing I also want to point out, wing officials, make sure we have these guys on the line of scrimmage like they're supposed to be by rule. We only have four in the backfield. He's in the backfield. These three are in the backfield. It's hard to tell the angle that we're in here, but this guy on the end and this guy here, maybe those two on the end, just going to make sure that they are on the line of scrimmage like they're supposed to be by rule. So we have a wonky play here. That's what we just call a fire play. It's not a design fake punt. He just bobbles the snap. He's going to pick it up and then throw it. And we kind of have no idea what's going on here. Which is, you know, it's not too surprising. Because, you know, in a crew of seven, we all are looking at different things in this. Um, and, of course, we can always get at, get together at the end of the, end of the play and kind of talk this out. But let's just walk through this. Kind of looking at who's who's looking at what and what they're supposed to be looking. So the punter bobbles it. Uh, R he's got a, he's all on the punter. So he's gonna punter's gonna pick it up, throw it downfield. Maybe he was throwing it at someone he intended to, or maybe he was just throwing it uh, just to throw it, which is something we need to kind of be thinking about. Because he's if he just picks it up, chunks it downfield, he's not he's not throwing it at anyone in particular, or there's not an eligible receiver in the area. Um, then we have intentional grounding. We don't say intentional grounding on the scrimmage kick a lot because they're not supposed to. But that's something we need to keep in mind is this. So, which is what it looks like. It looks like he just picks it up and chunks it downfield. Because if you look at this, the receiver who's who's going who's in the area, uh, he never looks back. He's just going straight. He's the gunner. That's all he's doing. He's just going straight down the field. So who's going to see this ball hit the ground? It can't be the white hat because the white hat, he's focusing all on the quarterback. Especially see the, no, the quarterback, whoever. He is a passer, so we'll call him the passer. All his attention is on the passer right now because the passer does get hit. He's going to watch the action on the passer. So white hat's not going to know what happens to this play or what happens to this ball once it goes downfield. Umpire Mike can help out on this. Um, it just it just depends on what they see because I know it's deeps. So the back judge, for instance, um, he may not see the ball be thrown. I mean, he, the way he's looking at it, he may just see that the ball comes out kind of weird. Maybe it doesn't come out as like a regular pump would be. Because you know, as a back judge, we are gonna peek at the snap and peek at the trajectory of the ball, see what the trajectory is. But we may not necessarily see that the ball was thrown. Same with the other Ds. We may not necessarily see that the ball is thrown. We may just see it kind of come out weird. And we don't really know what's going on. It could be blocked. It could just be a, a shank. Uh, we don't know. So I'm kind of thinking maybe the umpire, maybe the wings can help out of this. It is a weird play because we're all looking at uh, different things. And we all may not be following the whole play completely. But we do need to know what happens in this play if we have to come together and figure out, okay, this was an incomplete pass, um, then we need to. Another thing, too, is this at the gunner here, they probably wanted a holding because since it was a pass. We know it's a deep. We're probably not going to know whether it's a pass or a kick, but either way, we have a hold here. Uh, he definitely gets held and restricted. So even if this wasn't a pass, this is a regular scrimmage kick. Um... That's a hold, and it's pretty significant. You can't just shrug that off as it's not as that's a minor foul. That's a pretty big foul because uh, it definitely restricted him from getting to the tackle. So even if this is regular kick, he, if he holds him that much, I mean he he just took him out of the play for a potential cat tackle, or to prevent even prevent the receiver from fielding it cleanly. So we got to throw this hold, you know, pass, kick, whatever. Uh, that's got to be thrown. So again, that was a weird, weird play. Um, great one to start the review off with for this season. But, hey. 
All right, let's look at some DPIs. We ask DPI a lot. I don't cover it a whole lot in, in reviews because sometimes I feel like we're just kind of running into the ground. But remember, we have categories of DPI. Uh, they should be listed in the manual if they're not. But your anagram you use is P Chang. It used to be PF Chang, uh, but when face guarding was taken away, now we just look at P Chang. So you have plane through the back, cut off, hook and turn, arm bar, not playing the ball, and grabbing the arm. Those are your six categories of DPI. P Chang, remember that. You also want to ask yourself the fundamental question, is the defender trying to keep the ball from getting to the receiver or keep the receiver from getting to the ball? So let's look at the, at the, at the passing question here. And you can see what he does is he just controls them. And that's one thing you want to look for. Just like for a pass, we look for possession and control. Sometimes with DPI, that's what we're looking for as well. Kind of also similar to a hold. You would look and see if they just control the, the person that's trying to block them or they're trying to block. And that's what we have here. This category would be not playing the ball. As you can see, he's just going to grab that receiver and just kind of control them. So that would be not playing the ball. And that's one thing you want to look for as well. Two plays later, pick it on the same official. This is a good no call for DPI because there is contact, but there's not, it does not fall into any type of category. Uh, the closest you could have would be grabbing the arm, but it's not really significant. And the receiver was still able to make a play um, or come close to making a play. Plus, you know, just any kind of like insufficient uh, contact too. You know, we're not gonna we're not gonna flag it. Uh, there's got to be clear advantage gained and a clear category that is taken into. So good job here. One thing I will say, when you are in a crew of seven, field judge, side judge, remember you stay on the goal line, um, no matter what. When a deep official here gets kind of happy feet, moves off the goal line a little bit, he does eventually come back. But yeah, we just, well, maybe he did. Maybe he stayed at the goal line. It's hard to tell these angles, but we just want to get the goal line, stay at the goal line, field judge, side judge, and we can adjudicate from there. This is a good one, too. Nothing really, to go, nothing really going here. And plus, you know, he catches it. Now, it's hard to make a case for DPI if he catches it. I'm not saying you never throw if he catches it, um, but it's hard to make a sufficient case for it. And remember, when, the, when we when we say not playing the ball, uh, we want there to be contact. So you see the, the defender here, yeah, he's not playing the ball, but there's also really no significant contact. He's just looking at the receiver and just playing it that way. You, we would only categorize that for DPI for not playing the ball if there's significant contact made. And here there's just not any of that. Um, even if the receiver drops this, I don't think we have a case for DPI. So, good job there. Back, pick it on the same official. And this is kind of the same thing. He's not playing the ball. You can see this one probably more grabbing the arm. You see... The defender's going to grab that receiver's left arm, which kind of really just kind of incapacitates him from making the play. So yeah, DPI is not easy. It's a lot of judgment call. Um, that's why we make the big bucks back D. So this one's just going to be a little tangling of the feet. Remember, if there's incidental tangling of the feet, that's not DPI. That's one of the hardest ones to hold our flag on because everyone in the stadium wants that call. It looks ugly because you have a receiver going to the ground. But if they're just tangling the feet, that is not a category of DPI. There's no category we can put it in. Um, there's no intent by the defender. We just, they're just incidental tangling of the feet like right here. Uh, we just, we can't put that in a category and we can't flag it. Again, it sucks because it's one of those coaches and fantasy receiver hit the ground. It looks ugly. They want to call. We just can't do it. 
Now this one I will say, this is a lot closer because then you kind of have the receiver and the defender kind of going at it. But he's never really taken off his stride. The receiver is. He, I mean, you can see him kind of lose his footing here, but it's hard to tell really if he loses his footing because of anything the receiver's doing. Plus, you also have an underthrown ball. We can't penalize the defender for having an inside position on the receiver and then the ball being underthrown. Because you can see, uh, the defender's just running, running pace and pace with him. And there's not really any contact. And you have an underthrown ball. But we're not going to bail the quarterback out on this one. This is just a whole lot of nothing. Uh, it's a good no call by the deep there. Again here, this one was thrown, but I got to say, I don't think there's anything there. Especially when you can see, I mean, it hits the receiver right in the hands. And this is one of those where, you know, normally we would say, well, he caught it. Um, so maybe you don't throw. If he caught it. Yeah, he caught it. So maybe you don't throw. But we also got to look at the location of the field. This would be half the distance to the goal line. You know, it's a 15 yard penalty. And, so, and we're looking, we're at what, the 18? So this would go to the 9. Well, you'd probably, you'd probably still decline it. But either way, there's just nothing really significant here. And again, what are you going to put it, what category are you going to put it in? I don't think you can put it in one. So this is the one we would want to just hold our flag on that one. Speaking of DPI, here we want to be looking for offensive pass interference. Remember, receivers cannot block downfield before a pass is thrown on a forward pass that goes beyond the line of scrimmage. His outside receiver, he's an eligible receiver. So he's going to go downfield and he's going to block. Pass goes forward pass, goes beyond the line of scrimmage. Should be offensive pass interference. This one started, he's an eligible receiver as well, inside guy. He's going to go down field and block. Again, this is all, these are all offensive pass interference. So these are things we're going to be looking at as well. Um, deep, you can call this. That's your outside guy. He's your key. You see he's executing a block. Pass goes downfield. So wings, deeps kind of communicate with each other on that one. Deeps, if you see your eligible receiver blocking downfield, maybe we want to get involved and ask the wings if, that pa if there's a pass that went beyond the line of scrimmage. Because if so, now we have offensive pass interference for blocking downfield. That would be that category. So this is from preseason scrimmage. That's why your quarterback's wearing a different jersey. Good job by the deep here. Good spacing off the pylon. Personally, I would be a little bit deeper, but that's a personal preference on mine because I like to be deep. But everything's good here. Once you get to your spot, this is crew six. Once you get to your spot, you just got to stay there and let everything come to you. Get spot inbound. Good job here. Just a couple of nitpicks here. Wings. Once When the inside the two, when the deep has it, you're going to come and you're going to clean up all the mess uh, kind of behind them. So Wing, you would just come on down here behind. Go, Please go behind the deep and clean up this mess. Other nitpick, too, is a deep. Good job coming to the spot, but instead of looking down at the spot, uh, that spot's not going to go anywhere. So just kind of turn your shoulders and watch everything here. Still take the spot, put your foot on the spot, still kill the clock. But just kind of turn your body and watch this. That way we have this official and that official watching everything going on right there. I know it's a nitpick, but, you know, that's what we're here for. We're going to nitpick certain things. All right, this is another preseason scrimmage. 
this is worth talking about for a little bit. So let's just watch the whole play in question at once. And then we'll talk about the rules, talk about the mechanics of it. There's a lot to, lot to, just like the first play, there's a lot to digest on this one as well. There's a close-up version. Now we'll get the end zone view. So the first thing is first, let's talk about kind of the, uh, let's talk about the rule. See what, what the result of the play here is going to be and why. So we're going to have a forward pass, forward pass, forward pass. All right, so we have possession. Now we look, we have possession. Now we have to look for control. Things we're looking for, uh, for control of the ball. We're looking for the receiver to tuck it. We're looking for him to extend it, move it across his body voluntarily. Anything to exhibit some form of control on this. So you see this extension right here. So he has possession of it. He's got both hands. He's pulled it into his body. Now he's going to pull it out of his body to extend it. This is control. He has control of this ball. He's exhibited control of this ball. Now what happens, it looks like he's going to hit the ground, and then the ball comes out. Remember, the ball cannot cause a fumble. It can cause an incomplete pass, but it cannot cause a fumble. But in this case, it's not causing an incomplete pass because we've already demonstrated we have possession and control of the football. So this cannot be an incomplete pass at this point. It is possession and control. This is a completed catch. So once he hits the ground, ball comes up as a result of hitting the ground. Uh, that would be a fumble. Ground cannot cause a fumble. So he is down. The question is going to be when he is down, which would be right, unless the knee hit the ground back here, which is hard to tell. Uh, I don't think his knee hit the ground, so we're going to go with the shoulder. He's down right here. Unless that ball is across the goal line, he is down inside the one. If it's across the goal line when the shoulder hits the ground, um, then we have a touchdown. But it does not appear to be across the goal line. Hard for us to tell. That's all on the deep right here. So let's talk about the mechanics of the deep in this particular play. Let's go to our back wide, wide angle. So as a deep, his initial position right there is perfect. Deep, once we get inside the 20 or you're at a position where you're at the goal line, you are not moving off that spot unless the end line is threatened. And a crew of six. Crew of seven, Phil just side jump. Once you're at the goal line, you're staying on the goal line. Uh, how the deep is right there, that is usually how I set up. I go ahead and square my shoulders to the goal line because all the action I'm concerned about is going to happen right across that goal line. When I set up like that, I do not move unless the, a pass threatens the end line. It's the only time I move. His depth is perfect. It looks like he may have his toes on the white, which is about where I do. Put toes on the edge of the white. you got all that room behind you to work with. So use it to your advantage. Again, everything's perfect. There's no reason to move. Why should he move? Still no reason to move. In line is not threatened. All the action is going to happen at the goal line. No reason to move. No, Still no reason to move. Now he starts to move. Don't. There's no reason to move at this point. All the action you need is happening right there at the goal line. Uh, moving is moving your eyes. So you're not going to see as clearly. And you're risking getting put out of position. Your perfect position there. No reason to move off that goal line. And now by the time you moved in, first thing you done is we moved off the goal line. Just had to ask why. There's no reason to move off the goal line here. Uh, and then we move forward to the field of play, and we still have a live ball. Anytime the ball is live, we want to stay off the field. Um, unless you're, you know, Obviously, unless you're a referee or umpire. Wings deep, so when the ball is live, we're off the field. There's no reason to be on the field whatsoever. Everything else is good. Beanbag's good. We're signifying we have a punt. I mean a fumble. So mechanically we're great. We got the beanbag down. Only a uh, nitpick here. We want to put that. We want to drop that beanbag at the one. Uh, put it in the field of play. Kind of drop it at the one. 
I'll say, make it demonstrative so everyone knows we got a fumble. It's a good job there. But again, the only thing I would say nitpicking on the deep, I'm not trying to pick on the deep. This is it's not the easiest play in the world. Uh, at the end of the day, he got the call right, which is all that matters. But it is a fumble. There's no reason to move off this goal line until the ball is recovered right here. Then we can move off the goal line and stop the clock. First thing we do is stop the clock. Um, because I think I think we have a. I wasn't really paying attention to who was offense and who was defense. I think we have a fumble recovered by the defense. So then we stop the clock. Now we can move to the spot. Same thing on wing. It's just kind of stay back. There's no reason in wing to run up there either. Uh, everyone just kind of stay back. Especially when you have a fumble and there's a rush to the fumble, wider is better because we want, we want to be able to see what's all going on. So there's no reason to run up and try to get in the middle of that. That's the only thing I would say here is the deep. You just stay on that goal line off field of play uh, pretty much until now when you have to spot the ball. And then if you know for sure that the defense recovers, go ahead and point. You're going the other way. That lets everyone in the stadium know uh, we're going the other way. We don't have to wait on the white hat to come and do it. If we know for a matter, if we know for a fact uh, defense recovered, go ahead and stop the clock and point the other way. So that is it for this week. Again, I'm sorry we didn't do a preseason. We are going to try to do a Corky Kell review. Uh, it just depends. Corky Kell review. Uh, I want to do one, but there's just so much film to look at for Corky Kell. So many games. But we're going to try to do it. Um, yeah, we'll try this week, next week. Not sure. But otherwise, stay tuned. For week two, good luck in this, this week. Hopefully none of your games get canceled due to COVID. And hopefully you all stay safe.